Okay. Um, so thank you all for being here as always. Um, this is going to be uh, our Zoom media session this week, our first ahead of a Pac-12 uh, weekend trip. Um, we have the Arizona schools this weekend with Arizona on Friday, um, a top 10 matchup there. Uh, today we're joined by uh, head coach Corey Close and student athletes, uh, Charisma Osborne and Cameron Brown. Um, and we'll, we'll get started with an opening uh, statement from coach um, and then we can open up to questions um, as we add one more person in here. Um, I should add that uh, Charisma is the reigning Pac-12 player of the week. Um, so I'll toss that in there. So I'll, I'll hand it over to, to coach first. Reigning, it's like you have to defend your title, Charisma. So, you know, that was, that was a joke, Charisma. <laughs> she doesn't, she's like, whatever. Um, just thank you all for being here and just appreciate y'all. Um, you know, I think that uh, it's just really, this is not easy. I'm sure it's not easy for you all and as the media, and it is really not easy for us. Um, that, but at the same time, I'm trying to just think about like how much um, when I was growing up or when these young women were growing up, we just looked for opportunities to play, to play the game we love, to be around each other, to enjoy a team environment. And so just really trying to stay focused on that. Uh, excited about the opportunity to go on the road together. Um, and and uh, we feel like we're this traveling bubble and we're trying to, we're, we're going down to Arizona and, and Arizona state. And, uh, and, you know, I, I told the team today that, you know, this is, this is why you came. This is why you sacrifice so much. This is why you have been willing to be so careful is because you want an opportunity to be able to measure yourself and your growth against the best. And, uh, and just really, really thankful for the opportunity. But I want to say I'm more than anything, I'm thankful for the young women I get to be around. Their resiliency, their, um, their willingness to keep getting up. And, and even after they get knocked down and adjustments, we haven't had one game so far that's been played when we thought it was going to be. And we just rescheduled another one. And, um, but I just, I just love these women and I respect them and I appreciate their sacrifice and what they are sacrificing uh, in order to have a season. And so just really appreciate them. And, and they teach me more than I teach them every single day. All right, we'll, uh, we'll start with uh, questions for everyone. Um, we usually do the raise hand function, um, if you uh, know how to do that. Um, so we'll start with uh, Tugni from the LA Times. Hey coach, uh, you mentioned traveling, obviously this is, this is gonna be your first plane trip. Um, what kind of, uh, I guess, uh, cautious takes you need um, when you travel to make sure you're traveling safely so you don't kind of pick up anything on the road in terms of getting sick? Well, we're really fortunate. Uh, we're one of the few teams in our conference that our, our administration, we, char we charter everywhere we go. Uh, so that, that eliminates the, the real, the plane rides are really not your biggest risk. Uh, or even bus rides because the filtration systems are pretty good and we can control social distancing. Uh, it's really the, the travel risk become more in terminals and, and things where you can't uh, control that environment and we don't have to deal with that at all. So I honestly feel really good about uh, where we're doing. We all, every player has a single room on the road. So we're sort of limiting those kind of contacts. And, um, you know, so at this point we know exactly what it takes, you know, where we have to um, pretty much we're masked and socially distanced at every opportunity outside of the court when we're playing. So um, we're, we're pretty well versed at it, but, you know, I really have to give credit to our administration that has afforded us the opportunity to take those uh, safety measures that we know come at a cost, but they've been really committed on that end. And speaking of kind of the resilience of this team, how, I guess, how did they prove it to you again this weekend, having that game uh, kind of, uh, canceled yeah. in them? They prove it to me literally every day. There's something every day too, seriously, like, and I'm not exaggerating. Like they told me today when I came into the weight room to talk to them, they like, we don't want to see you. Cause every time you come before us, not in <laughs> practice, it means there's bad news, you know? And um, you know, today, uh, well, this weekend, you know, just in terms of you, uh, charisma as she sits here right here, I, especially, I, I saw her face as soon as I said that about the Pepperdine game. And it just was this, uh, but you know, just the way she's responded this week and come back and ready to go and, and to keep growing. 
Um, you know, it's just a really hard thing. I asked them to write down, uh, yes, or maybe Monday, seven ways that they reframed it. Okay, so we didn't get to play at Pepperdine. How did you reframe that experience and turn that into a positive? And they read some of them today uh, before practice and, and they just continue to just be amazing how they uh, choose, to, um, choose to form everything as an opportunity to learn and grow. And that, you know, it, it may not be their first choice but they're gonna make the best out of it. So, uh, and that takes a lot of courage. That takes a lot for me as a 49 year old, let alone as an 18 to 23 year old in our, on our team. So um, today was really hard. I, I had told them that they weren't gonna be able to go home for Christmas uh, or for the holiday break. And that, and that was really hard for most of our team as well as uh, we had a really significant loss in our Bruin family. Our life coaches are Jenny Jordan and Kevin Jordan. And Jenny is the daughter of Rafer Johnson. And uh, I'll get, if I talk about too long, I'll get really choked up about it. But I had to tell them about the passing of Rafer Johnson and the impact that he's had on our program. He sits in the third row every single game and he and Betsy have been some of our most faithful supporters. And, you know, he was one of the people at my press conference and, you know, and, and talk about his resilience and his strength. And I, I can't speak for them, but he, he deeply inspires me. And, uh, and his influence on his daughter, who therefore is a life coach for our team, uh, is really impactful. So um, even uh, when I brought that news to them, you know, they just have proven that they are compassionate, but determined all at the same time. I'm gonna toss it to uh, uh, Michael with Daily Bruin. You guys, um, <clears throat> hope everything is going well. I see you guys again. Um, I have a question, well, first for Cameron. So this year is the bench is a little shorter and your minutes are um, getting a little higher. Uh, how do you feel about your role going into conference play and also just as the bench unit as a whole? I feel really excited about it. Uh, just getting a chance to get in and help my team wherever they need me to. Uh, kind of like our bench, it's small, but in a sense, we're deep. We're very versatile. We can do whatever needs to be done after watching. Uh, when we go into seven, we know, okay, this is how I need to help. Oh, okay, they need a little push here. Okay, I'm gonna give it here. So we really pay attention to that when we're on the sidelines and that's where we really try to help. So we may look small, but it doesn't really feel like it. And um, Charisma, I'm going in your second year, especially from the guard position where you're now facing one of the best players in the country, Aaron McDonald again. What is your mindset and what's your game plan going into that matchup? Yeah, I'm actually really excited for this matchup. Uh, last time we played Arizona, we could play the best. So I think all of us are just really excited to like be able to like get that chance to like run it back. Um, but going into the game, I'm just going to try to be aggressive and do what I do and try to play defense on her. She's a really great player. So just do the best that I can. You ready to go to uh, Dave Marcus, UCLA Radio? Thanks, Ryan. I've got one for each of you. Cameron, I'm going to start with you. It, I didn't put my finger on it until I watched Dee Dee Richards last night. Thank goodness she's okay. But the way you were flying around the court everywhere reminded me a lot about the way she plays. Do you see that as your role, just being the energetic disruptor? Yes, I do. It's funny that you mentioned Dee Dee. We both played on the same for the same EYBL program. So I got to watch her like through high school before she went to college. So it's really cool. But yes, I pride myself kind of being a defender. I love it. Uh, flying around wherever the team needs me to go. That's where I'll fly around to. So I really like I really like that just to be energetic, bring energy and just do whatever needs to be done. Charisma one point off a career high, but you had a career high six assists. What are you more proud of, the 31 or the six? Honestly, the six assists, because I just was not expecting me to get that many assists. Like, like that just was not, I wasn't thinking that was in my bag, but clearly it is. So definitely the assist. And coach, congratulations on running the table in the non-conference part of the schedule. What are the challenges <laughs> going right into conference? Well, I think the, the challenge, I told the team today though, it, the, you think about that, but if I, if it was a normal scheduling year, I would still want to have a top 10 uh, team on our schedule within the first three games. 
to give yourself a barometer of where you are. And so I really challenge them to look at it just that way that, yeah, we are in the PAC 12 conference already. Um, but you know, there's going to be so many changes, ups and downs, where we play, how we play, how this unfolds, um, that I, you know, look at it as, okay, this, uh, this is a top 10 matchup. Like we would normally schedule within the first several games to figure out where are we, where, where do we need to continue to get better? And, um, you know, we go into every environment to compete, to win, uh, to be our best. Um, but, you know, really understanding where we are in this journey uh, is more important than ever because we haven't had the same kind of lead up. And so, uh, you know, it's, it is, it's a, I just don't even think as a coach, I have to guard against comparing it to any other year. Like all I need to do is refocus on how do I help our team get better in the most important ways today and and not get distracted by anything else so that's really my challenge and so i'm, I'm i love it i mean in terms of th they don't that's what they came here for right i mean this is what they came to do is to play in the best conference in the country against the best to measure their progress against the best and so we're getting a chance right off the bat and we're going to be able to do that the rest of the way well uh we'll go over to dennis for um, news for us online um, I have two questions. The first one is for Coach Close, and then the second question is for the student athletes. So, Coach Close, um, what do you think is the biggest impact that Mr. Johnson had um, as a gold medalist or more as a human humanitarian? And then for the student athletes, how are you able to keep your spirits up through all, throughout all of this? Hmm. Um, you know, Rafer, um, as a human being, like he was one of the best athletes uh, in the history of UCLA sports, which is incredible. Uh, one of the best, you know, obviously athletes in the world and his competition in the decathlon and the javelin. Um, and, and to say that that pales in comparison to who he was as a human being, that's like no joke. That's not like cliche. That's like, this is real. And, uh, you know, I just really... Huh. there's just been so many conversations and, and I've been playing his daughter called me right as we went into film today and um, and since that time I just have been running all these memories in my head and I host I had the one of my very favorite memories since I've been at UCLA is I got to host Rafer Johnson's 80th birthday party at my house and at that birthday party all of these people came and shared about their impact his impact on them and if I told you it was the who's who, and none of them talked about his athletic accomplishments. They talked about his, uh, you know, his, his civil rights uh, impact. They talked about his kindness. They talked about his uh, work with Special Olympics. They talked about the kind of father he was, the kind of husband he was. I remember his wife, Betsy, who's incredible in her own right, reading a letter at that party and talking about how much she respected her husband as a man. And I just, uh, the, list, the list goes on and on. Um, literally his right now, as I'm talking about it, his daughter te just texts me. Um, and I just am, uh, you know, I, I just am blown away by his influence. One of the traditions we had for many years when I first got here is he used to come in on our first day of practice and teach our players how to put their shoes and socks on the same way that Coach Wooden used to teach his players how to put their shoes and socks on. And I thought about it today that I need to go and get some of those videos out and show this current team the way he did that. And uh, there was a really powerful thing he did with that is it really quickly to say, he went through and methodically talked about how, his play, how, how coach wouldn't taught them to do that. And I had heard the story a hundred times. But at the end, he said, you know, I was a track athlete playing basketball. And actually, I was very insecure. I was playing basketball with all these All-Americans. And I really didn't know where I fit. But that day that Coach Wooden came in and taught me how to have my shoes and socks put on the exact same way as all these amazing All-Americans from all over the country, at the end of it, I, we all stood up and we were actually ready to become a team because we all put our socks and shoes on the exact same way. It didn't matter where we were from, what religion we were, how good we were, but it didn't matter because we were able to become a team because we put our shoes and socks on the exact same way. And he had just so many of these powerful things over and over again. And, you know, I'll never forget, 
you know, just what he whispered to me after my press conference when I got the job here. And he said, um, make sure that you, he, he literally came up and he hugged me and he told me two things. One, get my, get my uh, daughter and my grandkids back here because they were at the time uh, in Pittsburgh. So he's like, help me get them back. And then secondly, he said, uh, make sure you, you coach their hearts just like Coach Wooden taught my heart. And, uh, you know, just those things go on and on. And, and so uh, I don't think it's actually even a question. His, his impact on people and hearts is even greater than his impact uh, on the world of athletics. Thank you. I can smile at the fact that not a lot of people in this world can be like, I've had an Olympian, one who's carried the torch uh, at the start of the Olympics, come watch my basketball games, or I've had a chance or an opportunity to talk with him. I got to talk with him a couple of times. One time after a game, uh, he actually commented about me running around on the floor and being super active. And I was like, I'm in awe because I know who you are and you're over here talking to me, know my first name. I just think that's super cool. And just from an impact standpoint, I've had a lot more contact with his daughter, Jenny. She uh, runs chapels. So like her impact in my life came from him. Like she learned a lot of stuff from her dad. So just the entire impact that he's had um, in my life. And I've only talked to him a couple of times and he's this huge Olympic person. I can find joy in the fact that, wow, like this person is who I've met. He's touched my life in ways that he doesn't even really understand or know. So I just find joy in that. And Cameron, uh, you played like Rayford did as a basketball player. You really did. So. <laughs> and then we got the Windward girls. Go ahead, Grizz. <laughs> yeah, me and Jenny got that connection because we both went to Windward. Um, but yeah, I just agree with Cam, like the impact that him and his family has had on this program and had on me has just been amazing. Um, but to go back to your other question about like how we've been dealing with all of the disappointment that's been happening. I think that just like having the girls and having our coaches and the staff and like all of us going through it together has just been very like helpful. And it's not just like one person going through a hard time, like all of it. Um, we all have each other's backs and like, we all know it's hard right now, but like, just like, being able to go through it with them and like having someone to talk to at all times has just been very helpful. Thank you. Toss it over to Sue. Hi, everybody. Um, I was going to ask, first of all, I didn't see it on your game notes. Is Chantel Horvat available to play this weekend? We are planning on her. She just, she practiced with us today. So we are hopeful she's going to be available this weekend. That's wonderful. Um, Arizona has a, a few more players than you do. And I was just <laughs> going to ask you, just a couple. Um, I was going to ask you guys, uh, you know, I saw about, it's all about a tactician's game. So how are you guys planning to strategically play with fewer players than they are and, uh, and make this a, a game? Well, I mean, I, I think we're, we're planning, we want to go down and, and play to our strengths. I think that's really what it's going to come down to, right, is, is in these kind of games, both are really, teams are really good, and we both have really good players. I, I really, um, I think they, you know, we sort of know what we're going to get from Ari and from Kate Reese, and, uh, you know, and I think that they probably would say the same about Riz and, and Michaela. Uh, I really think it's going to be players like Cameron, uh, it's going to be players like uh, Lauren, you know, Miller bringing the ball up to, I, I, we're, we're really going to rely on our versatility it's, uh, to bring the ball up versus their presses and things like that. And, and I, I really do believe it's going to be the other players. It's going to be the ones that uh, step up in new roles and do things and make impact uh, intangible plays. I think, you know, Aries are uh, going to find a way to get some, you know, of hers and Kate Reese and Michaela and, and Charisma. But, uh, you know, I really like the heart of wh who we have. And so uh, I think it's going to be those other players and who can impact, step up and impact the game in unique ways. I was reading, I was watching our games <coughs> last year and, and I, um, two role players that made huge impacts, Chantel Horvat in the first game and Cameron in the second game. And I just think those are going to, we're going to have to string some of those together um, that uh, having different players step up in new ways. And, uh, and, you know, and I think it's going to be, um, 
it's going to be about who can play to their strengths, you know, and they're going to try to play almost hockey. They're going to bring five new and, and go for it and try to press us. And, and we're going to try to take advantage of that and turn it, you know, to our advantage and get behind their defense and create numbers, breaks and situations. And so uh, it's going to be whichever team can play to their strengths better. Okay. And then um, for, for uh, Riss and Cameron, I know, and it's too bad. I'm sorry that you guys only got to play one game. It feels like, well, preseason's over. What? It just started like four days ago. Um, what did you have? What have you guys learned in like the one game that you did have? What did you guys learn about yourselves as a team in that game? Because I know, you know, obviously playing against other people is obviously way more exciting than playing against each other. Yeah, I think we actually learned a lot. Like, I think we figured, or not figured out, but we learned that we have so much more potential. Like, we felt like in the first half, we didn't play to the standards that we hold ourselves to. So to see us come out in, like, the third quarter and play, like, defense how we expect ourselves to play defense, I think that just gives us confidence that, like, we can be a way better team and we can continue to grow and be and turn into the team that we want to become. That's awesome. Yeah, kind of adding on to what Charisma said, our potential that we saw, we don't necessarily always see it in practice because we're sc scrimmaging against each other and stuff, but we saw a lot of places where we can still continue to grow, but we're like, oh, this doesn't look the same in practice as it does in a game when we're all right. on the same team playing together. And we're like, oh, we can actually, we actually mesh like this. We actually click like this. So it was cool to actually play all together for once and then definitely seeing opportunities where we can grow as well. That's great. I'm going to ask one more question. I'm going to ask Cameron instead of coach. Um, Cameron, were you at all surprised to see, uh, to see Riz go off for a career high Friday? I was so I don't count points during the game. When Coach Corey announced it in the locker room, I went crazy because I was like, I didn't even know she did that. <laughs> what? But that's just charisma. You never know, but she always produces. She's a bucket. She just does whatever <laughs> we need her to do. It's a risk. We just know that's her job. We know that's what she's going to do and what she's going to bring every day. Yeah, that show, that show, you guys may not have numbers, but you definitely have depth. And um uh, let's see. Yeah. So we're all going to be stuck here with no relatives for Christmas. So if y'all want to get a TikTok zoom going, you know, holler. <laughs> I will say this Sue, just on the non-conference thing is that we, um, it should be coming out pretty quickly that we're trying to reschedule our UC Santa Barbara game for 11 AM on the 9th. Is that right? Wednesday, that Wednesday. Oh, that's great. Okay. Oh, so just so you know that you guys will be, you you guys are the first to know on that front. So that's what we're working on right now. Oh, that's good. Every game counts. So that's, um, I hope that works out. Exactly. Thank you. And go back to uh, Tukni. Um, speaking of depth, coach, I know the lawsuit is what it is and it's going at its own pace, but um, once Izzy and Gemma get a chance to, to come here, what, um, obstacles do you foresee in them being able to work back and actually get onto the court? I mean, how quickly from their time being able to get out of quarantine, do you see them getting onto the court and helping you guys? And helping you guys yeah, I think it remains to be seen a little bit, but as soon as they're safe and ready, we, we plan on trying to integrate them in. They, they've been watching film uh, twice a week, both of them this whole time. Uh, they've even zoomed into a practice uh, that we're going to try to plan on doing that a little bit more, having them zoom in and watch practices. Uh, you know, they have been, uh, I just had a meeting with our academic staff. They've been kicking butt in the classroom for lack of a more academic term. They've been doing a phenomenal job that way. Um, but they, uh, you know, I think they have a, both have a very high basketball IQ and actually sort of the offensive schemes that we've been running is something they're actually very familiar with, with uh, Team Australia. So, um, I'm hopeful that, you know, I think it's just going to be a matter of, you know, conditioning levels, uh, you know, chemistry. Um, but as, uh, you know, as soon as their uh, bodies are safe to compete, uh, I, you know, and their minds are clicking and they start to mesh with our players, uh, we plan on integrating them uh, as soon as we possibly can uh, that fits with their safety and our team chemistry. If you could comment more just specifically on the situation, I know you can't comment on the exact lawsuit, but just how how they kind of held up during this time, and um, just it just seems like one more one more really tough thing in a in a year of a lot of tough things that these guys have to navigate. 
Yeah, I, you know, this is sort of my personal um, response, not necessarily my UCLA head coach response is that, um, you know, I'm not involved in the lawsuit. I can't even comment on the lawsuit because it's really not a UCLA thing. It's that the, these athletes have uh, garnered their own, uh, uh, you know, uh, legal representation and they have taken this on on their own. Um, but I think the thing for me personally is that I really hold really strong to my heart is that I recruited them here. Uh, UCLA recruited them here. We asked them to join our family. Uh, we asked them to come and represent us academically, socially, and competitively. And uh, it has worn really heavy on me that um, that they're not here because we're the ones that asked them to come. We're the ones that gave them a scholarship. We're the ones that do that. And the, and the fact that I feel like a bureaucratic thing is getting in their way is just weighed heavy on me because I feel responsible. Um, and you know, that's not a, that's not a legal thing. That's a personal thing. Cause these, these young women mean a lot to me and I make promises to their families. And so it's an integrity thing from my perspective, um, uh, from them, you know, it has been a emotional roller coaster. Uh, they have been, uh, it has been a real struggle to try to stay hopeful, anticipatory, and at the same time, uh, emotionally level. And uh, it's been literally what they've been doing every week for months, for probably six months. Is this the week I'm going to get to go? Is this the week? Is this the week? Could it happen now? And that's been hard on me at 49 years old, let alone at 19 years old or 18 years old. And um, so it has been a very, very hard struggle for them. And I appreciate deeply their perseverance, their commitment, their willingness to still engage in team activities, um, because it has been a painful journey. Well, hopefully we get to see them soon. Amen to that. <laughs> I think we'll wrap it up with, uh, Michael last question here. Um, yeah, then we'll wrap it up around six. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Charisma was for you, but also for Cameron, especially, and for you too, coach, because everyone can chime in if you want. Um, just without um, a real team leader in Japri's team this year, especially going to conference play when things get um, very intense, what are you missing about her and how are you guys making up for what you miss about Japri's on the floor and in the locker room? Um, yeah, we're definitely, I think we all miss Miss Jafrice. Jafrice was like a little firecracker. <laughs> um, but I think just Jafrice's leadership style, like it's definitely very different and there's no one like her, honestly. So definitely just like how she led us and like I felt like Jafrice was really like a leader that is willing to tell you like the hard things. So I feel like as a team, we're like working on trying to like hold each other accountable and like not take things like personal when we try to tell each other things. So just like try to focus on that. Yeah, like Charisma said, Japrice, uh, that's a character <laughs> and uh, we definitely miss her. Uh, yeah, we're definitely working on being able to tell each other like the hard things, but I think we're all kind of chipping in to be leaders. We have our captains, Michaela and Lindsay, and we definitely follow them. They're great leaders, but I think we're all kind of working together to lead ourselves as a team. So we don't have like designated people or even like the coaches trying to call us out. We're trying to call each other out so we can all like go together. So no one's really left behind. Yeah. You know, I think that for me, I, I miss her sense of humor and I miss her. She's just such a gym rat. You know, she just, there's never a day that went by that she didn't love playing the game she loved. And she, it's fun to watch her even today. Um, you know, just today I was watching some of the clips she posted and she texts me about something. And um, so, you know, I think you just miss her as a human being and as a person, but I'm excited for the pro that she is. And I'm also excited for what Cameron said to watch different players step up and lead in different ways. So, you know, I wanna celebrate Japrice's next steps in her journey. And then I'm also really enjoying uh, watching the steps of our current players and how they're stepping up as leaders as well. Great. Um, I think we usually wrap it up at the 30 minute mark. So we'll, we'll end it here. Um, thanks as always to everyone for, for being here. I'm gonna do, uh, my best. I'm working with Arizona to see if we can get a little area to do a post game Zoom press conference on on Friday. I think we'll kind of have to play things by ear as we go through the season, just based on the 
um, space that different venues have or you know what other administrations are thinking in terms of visiting uh, media availability, et cetera. Um, but I'll keep you all posted on that. Um, and if for some reason things go wrong, don't hesitate to text or email me and we can, we can always schedule um, individual inquiries, things like that, if, if we need quotes, et cetera. Um, and uh, yeah, I think coach, do you want to say something? Yeah, I just said, um, just really thank you guys for showing up at these. Uh, I think it means a lot to us the way that you're doing, you're covering our sport. But also, if you need anything extra from me, I know the players, we really try to be really good about this 30 minute mark um, to allow them to uh, continue their academic side as well as the other things that they've got going. Um, but if you need anything from me, just I'm available and I can stay if you need me to. Awesome. And, and yeah, and, and like I always say that this team is always great with the media. And, and so we'll, we'll do our best to accommodate as always. Um, thank you all uh, again for being here. I'll keep you posted on uh, stuff later this week and uh, we'll uh, talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you guys.